Nell Newman is an extraordinary environmental leader. She has transformed the organic food industry through her pioneering work as founder and president of Newman's Own Organics, changing public perception about the benefits of organic foods, increasing demand, and with it, the total acreage of crops grown without pesticides, and in the process, donating over $50 million in profits to educational and environmental charities. She was born an environmentalist and remains so to this day. Her crowning achievement was starting the organics company. She was so far ahead of the curve, and it was her idea, it was her baby, she created it. And her company, I think, has had measurable impact. She's got this charismatic, hidden encouragement that really gets people to make sure that they really are doing everything that they can do to be the best that they can be for these causes that, quite frankly, are a matter of life or death for our planet and, and for the human race. Nell Newman was born in New York City in 1959, the child of two of the most famous people in America, actors Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, who had three children together. Nell was the oldest of their three daughters and one of Paul Newman's six children. My dad loved to fish and my mom loved to garden, so it really immersed me in, you know, in nature at, at a very young age. Growing up with my sister Nell was like growing up with a science teacher. Always fascinated by birds, always fascinated by nature. She could outfish and outdrive most guys. As a very young child, I was fascinated by birds. And when I was eight, the landscaper's son brought me a little kestrel, which I raised. And from then on, I was infatuated by birds of prey. And then we discovered that the peregrine falcon was extinct east of the Mississippi due to something called DDT. I didn't know what that was. My mother said, it's what we spray on our food to keep the bugs off. That was really my aha catalyst moment. My mother was very much an activist, peace activist, environmental activist, very early on, and so she was a great role model. During her childhood, Nell was cast in two of her parents' films. Rachel Rachel was done in the summer, and they needed somebody to play mom in her flashbacks of her as a child. Marigold, I just ended up in the, in the role as Matilda. I mean, Dad directed it. It didn't really intrigue me. I always wanted to be a biologist. The Newman family alternated living between homes in Beverly Hills, California, and in Westport, Connecticut, which made school a challenge for Nell. She dropped out of high school in her sophomore year, opting to earn her GED. It was during this time Nell worked with the Peregrine Fund which was trying to reestablish the peregrine falcon in the United States. We did these two different release sites, one in Boise, Idaho, when I was 18, and then in my 20s, I did one up in uh, New Hampshire. In 1985, Nell Newman was part of a collaboration with her father to write Newman's own cookbook. Nell went on to attend the College of the Atlantic in Bar Harbor, Maine, and graduated in 1987 with a degree in human ecology. Her mother, Joanne Woodward, delivered the commencement address. After a brief stint at the Environmental Defense Fund in New York City, Ms. Newman moved to Berkeley, California. I was offered a job running the Ventana Wilderness Sanctuary in Santa Cruz, California, and they were doing bald eagle restoration. As I was trying to raise money, I began to look at more seriously at what dad was doing and you know the philanthropic money that that project had provided and I thought well maybe I could take that a step further maybe I could do an organic food product and then I would be supporting the environment in the process of growing our ingredients as well as provide money for charity so that was the beginnings of Newman's Own Organics and the first year our pretzels were the number one product in snack foods in natural food stores and our first profits was about 30,000. That was just the beginning of a, of a great run that went on till 2015 for a total of over 50 million. Here's somebody who ran a really big processed food company and did it right. She knows what the challenges are. She understands that engaging people that aren't on board in meaningful conversations and even getting them to alter their practices a little bit can have a dramatic impact. 
She was 100% involved with the farmers that were growing the things that went into the products. She was very much into fair pay for the people who worked for her. While running her highly successful organic food business, Nell appeared on television occasionally with her father to promote the Newman's own brand. I invented this cake because dad's favorite chocolate is our sweet dark orange and I thought, ooh, how can I make my angel food cake better? In the year 2000, Nell Newman met photographer Gary Irving and they married four years later. Ms. Newman went on to write what became a groundbreaking second book, The Newman's Own Organic's Guide to a Good Life. Then in 2010, Nell created the Nell Newman Foundation to support small, environmentally conscious organizations. The Nell Newman Foundation really giving seed money to a lot of organizations that might be underfunded otherwise. With the success of Newman's Own Organics and the Nell Newman Foundation, Ms. Newman has proven to be an inspirational leader in the fields of sustainable agriculture and environmental stewardship. She is seen as the, one of the very few genuine articles when it comes to the impact that she has had on the organic, the sustainable movement, uh, the land preservation movement, the environmental movement, sustainable seafood, you name it. The world has changed as a result of her good work. In 2014, Nell Newman won the National Audubon Society's prestigious Rachel Carson Award for Environmental Leadership. For me, what has inspired me in my life and keeps me going is the, the thought that my early fascination with birds focused me specifically on environmental issues and that Newman's Own Organics was able to clean up the environment through its organic agriculture, which benefited the peregrine falcon as well as people living on that farmland, and then provide money to charity because in my lifetime, the peregrine falcon went from extinct east of the Mississippi and almost across the United States, but through a huge restoration program, it is the most successful endangered species restoration program. So there are success stories, and I think that's what we all have to take to heart and remember that it gives me hope, and I hope it gives everybody else hope.